Good morning, everyone. Welcome to week, I'm not sure what week this is. This is about week four. So yeah, starting. Um, kind of where we are now, and I think it's important that we get a grasp of the, uh, the, the, the path that we're on between the two bodies. And, you know, a few years ago, we started off with nearly $8 billion in general fund spending. Spending had gotten, we hoped, to its peak. And since then, the uh, uh, mostly the Senate majority, I don't, don't mind saying, has put pressure on the budget to the point that we've dropped that back to about 4.3, 4.5. I think the, the governor's budget this year is about 4.5. That's been part of a plan. There's criticism that there isn't a fiscal plan out there, but no question there has been a uh, budget cutting element to this. And I think the Senate should be proud, as should the legislature really, because we have brought spending down. Now, with oil prices and production, we're within grasp of a, of a balanced budget. That doesn't mean we don't have to have a fiscal plan. We're going to move forward with a fiscal plan. But I think the talk of taxing Alaskans, um, we would hope they would put that in the in the garbage can over on the on the uh, House side, but we don't know. Point is, that's it, it's not part of the Senate's plan going forward. But we do need to have a structured draw from the earnings reserve. We have to put structure, excuse me, structure to how we uh, how we go forward, and that's going to be one of the Senate's biggest priorities this year is making sure there are structured rules to getting into that ERA. We saw last year with SB 23 why that's so necessary. I think Senator Stedman made the comment at the door at the time, or at, at, Senator Stedman made the comment that the wolves were at the door at the time, and uh, in fact it was proven that he was correct. When we had that bill come over uh, from the, uh, the bill came over from the House that uh, put the, how, the uh, operating budget and the capital budget all, all together, spent a tremendous amount of money, and inflicted about a 10% hit onto the accounts of the uh, permanent fund. Further uh, exemplifying why we have to go forward with a structured draw. So as we, as we consider the budget, obviously there's more things on the table this year than the budget, but as we consider the budget, we are working from a point in time where we have the money to, to close the gap in a very few years. So we need to change our rhetoric. That $26 rhetoric, the $26 being the low that oil hit uh, back uh, about three years ago, that was what began this discussion. And people who were a little freaked out at that period in, of time because oil was so low, maybe they were right to, to be uh, a little concerned or maybe even panicking, panicking a little bit. But the Senate didn't panic, and we have measuredly moved forward on uh, putting a, a rational uh, method in place to make sure that we can balance our budget. Got two people from finance today that can speak more on the numbers. Uh, we can give you some really general numbers. I think they're useful for particularly for the press to just kind of understand where we are. Uh, and we're, we're, we're going to be using rounded numbers. So if you're going to ask us about specific uh, down to the dollars, we don't have that number uh, before us. Maybe some of the people on finance do. But uh, if you could go ahead and direct your question at the finance people regarding the budget, that's fine. And we can talk about other things as well. Becky? Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Senator Kelly, I have a two-part question for you. Mm -hmm. The first is, when do Senate Republicans plan to meet on the uh, Kowalki appointment? Uh, we'll probably do that, uh, well, we'll do that very early this week. Uh, the thing that we're struggling with uh, is not Randall Kowalki. Um, all indications are he's a good Alaskan. Uh, we're concerned at this point that the governor didn't follow a fairly, it's a traditional process of taking the names that were sent to him by the people of the district. The Matsu held a very public process to come up with those names, and the governor ignored them. I'm not even going to criticize him for that. He has the right. He followed the process. Okay. Now we, it's in our court, and we're going to look at this, and our biggest concern is, did the people of, were the people of Matsu treated properly uh, in the uh, advancing of Mr. Kowalki's name? And uh, that, that's going to be our point of discussion. Nothing against him. Uh, we'll see. How do you weigh those factors? How do you weigh a fine choice 
and in your what you had called him in your statement on Friday, and uh, you know not letting another month pass before that district is represented with that idea of potentially you know pushing back against you know the mm -hmm. governor. Um, well, I, I think you know if if we turn him down, that will be pushing back against the governor somewhat. <laughs> Um, we would hope that if that happens, uh, there has been no vote taken yet, uh, we would hope if that ha happens that he's rejected that the governor will go back and ask for a couple more names rather than to just go outside the, the list. Go ahead. Before we do, I think uh, Senator Machiki wants to make some comments on general budget issues as well. Sure. Sure, that's fine. So I, I, one of the things we wanted to talk about, our priority this year is a structured draw from the earnings reserve. It is the number one priority, and there's a reason for that, right? So you talked a lot, you, we talked a lot about a budget um, deficit at the time when we had $26 oil and we were looking at a $4 billion budget deficit. That is not the case anymore. The administration seems to agree with that. The only tax they have on the table is about new capital. It has nothing to do with filling the gap. So why do we say that? Because we're spending about um, 4.5 billion right now, okay? And you bring in 2 billion in revenue, UGF revenue. The revenue from the 5% draw will be about another $2 billion. There's an estimated very conservative increase in revenue of about $200 million, which brings us to 4.2 billion. With a $4.5 billion budget, that gives us a $300 million budget deficit. That is the estimated deficit. Now, we're using the governor's numbers. We're unlikely to approve the, budget or budgets gov or the governor's budget as stated, but the reality of it is with some additional cuts or a couple of dollars on the price of oil, we're balanced. Either this year, next year, or at the very latest, the year after, we're gonna be dealing with a balanced budget without taxes. Now, aren't you glad we didn't pass a 650 to 750 million um, dollar income tax? Today, we would be overcapitalized by 500 million dollars. Today, that's increased spending. That's a growing government at a time when we're in recession. It would have been the wrong approach. Now, remember, the POMV is on a five-year average. So, don't ask me about what the market's done in the last week. That's a five-year running average. That is sustainability. That is stability. Oil's on a 365-day price. It's not on today's price. Even though we were pushing 70, we're down a couple bucks right now. That's a 365-day price. So that overcapitalization would have impacted our economy negatively. We would be dragging out a recession. And right now, it's all good news. We are very close, and we'll be working on a balanced budget within the next year or two. And we can talk in detail. But remember, we're taking all of the governor administrator and administrator's numbers. But here's a plot of the EIA oil price numbers, OK? This is where the, the governor is estimating, or the Department of Revenue is estimating oil prices. There becomes a $20 gap within a year or so. We believe we're gonna be at a higher oil price. I'm not saying $20. We're telling you with a, just a buck or two fills that gap in the next couple of years. So we wanted to clarify that for you. We are getting there if we're not there in the next year or two. And uh, we are not supporting additional revenue because again, we don't need a re additional revenue. I think the biggest point that you're making is that we're not going to uh, sit by and let oil price and production save us. That's not our plan, but it seems that some people, as they look at the fiscal situation of the state, want to discount the fact that prices are up, that production is up. And so that's that's going to be our foundation as we go forward. Natasha, any, any comments? Well, what I would add is the POMV is the most important thing that we could do in this legislative session, and I think both bodies agree with that. And the Senate, we have other priorities, such as a spending cap as well, and I can touch upon that in just a moment. But we are not, uh, we are not going to hold the POMV hostage, if you will, to get the spending cap and get our other priorities. We believe that they need to be separated as two different concepts, because the POMV is a structured draw is the most important thing. A spending cap is another um, strong desire of the Senate. We feel that if you look at the past between 2006 and 2014, 
Had we had a spending cap in place, we would have had a lower budget during those years. We would have spent less and thereby put more into the CBR during the good years. And then in starting in 2014, we would have taken less from the CBR to the tune of about $18 billion collectively over that course of, the, over that course of time. So going forward, uh, when we um, see the future and oil prices come back, uh, production increases, and we have upward pressure to increase the budget again, we need to remember and look back um, all the way back as far as 1993 when we have taken money from the CBR during our boost and uh, bus, boom and bust cycle. It's critical to have that CPR um, fully funded to the degree that we can, and a spending cap will help us get us there. Steve? Steve first and then James. Uh, mine's kind of a two-part question, uh, different topics. Uh, one, do you folks plan on talking to Mr. Kowalki at all in your process? Uh, I have spoken with him just very briefly, and others have as well. Uh, we'll give him due consideration. Go ahead. Um, the second question is, do you feel like your plan on the, on the fiscal side is uh, you can handle another downturn? Well, we can't budget everything. We can't have a fiscal plan going into the future that only uh, considers downturns. And where I'm going with that is that hard baked into the governor's numbers, into the OMB numbers, is just about every piece of bad news you could ever imagine. Yet we're taking their their production or their not their their, their uh, projections. So. We've got some room in there for downturns based on the fact that some of the assumptions they've made are unrealistic. James? Uh, James Brooks from the Juno Empire. For each of you, would you vote for Kowalki today, or are your concerns about, and I'm just talking individually, or are your concerns about the governor's process such that you would not? Yeah, I said the, I was pretty clear, I think, that it's the governor's process, and we're certainly not going to comment on uh, whether we're going to vote for him or not at this time. I do want to say one thing, too. I want to go back. I want to take us just, just back a couple of days. Um, you all understand there was no money in that budget that the uh, House passed for education because that wasn't, didn't seem to be refre reflected in the press very well. And the, the comments that were made on the floor and at the press conference and in the press relief release, um, and I think knowingly uh, were, were misleading. The reason I say knowingly is that there's a wealth of information available to the co-chairs of finance when they pass a bill like that. And uh, we have extremely professional staff in this uh, building. Um, I've been co-chair of finance 12 years in, in my career. I know others that have said, you know, that mistake could have happened to us, but people catch those mistakes. But the fact is, is I believe the House wanted to push forward something that wasn't true. There is, if you want to take your kid uh, to, to, to school, you can because there's pupil transportation in there. And there are some special schools that are open, but there's no formula money in there. And I just want to make that clear so that we go forward. I, I'm just, the, the rhetoric of the fully funded education uh, package was damaging to the people. The school districts were here. They're all very disappointed. Uh, the people who are in the education community are very disappointed to learn whatever happened on Thursday simply wasn't the truth. Next question. James, had a problem. Go ahead, James. Yeah. That was what I was going to ask you about next, is now that you have that bill, what's the plan for it? 